What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Springbank 10 year old. Stick around. All right, so we have something of a special episode today. This episode marks my 100th review on this channel, which is something that I'm quite proud of. Uh, I started this channel back in January, and I gotta say, I feel like the channel's come a pretty long way in a short amount of time. And it's also grown quite a bit. I'm creeping up on my first 1,000 subscribers, which of course is a big benchmark for any YouTuber. So I do wanna thank all of you out there who've subscribed, whether you've been with me since the beginning or if you've recently joined, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for commenting, and just thank you for being a part of a genuinely supportive community of viewers here. Anyway, never mind 100 episodes, you guys clicked on this video because I've got a Springbank review for you. Uh, we're looking at the 10 today, this one's been widely requested by you guys for a while now, and actually it's kind of shocking, this is the first Springbank I've ever reviewed on this channel. Weird. Actually no, it's not that weird. You know why? Because Springbank has been getting more and more expensive over these last few years. Now I have heard that's not true in every market, but it is true in a lot of markets. It's definitely true in my market. Not only is it getting more expensive here, it's also getting harder and harder to find. Back in the day you could find this bottle at basically every other whiskey shop and it was more affordable than it is now. Um, now you still can find this bottle and it's still somewhat affordable. So for the 10 itself it's not that bad, but some of the other Springbank expressions are ridiculous. The prices of the 12 in my market, the cast strength, through the roof, absolutely skyrocketed, and that's if you can find it at all. That being said, I've heard that's not true in every market, just some, and I do think that my market here in Taiwan is one of the worst hits, so if you're lucky, you're not suffering quite as much as I am when it comes to Springbank selection and prices. Anyway, back to our Springbank 10 here. Um, you know, Springbank 10, everyone knows it, everyone loves it, it's one of the most beloved whiskeys from one of Scotland's most beloved distilleries. Um, it's been matured in bourbon and sherry barrels, and it's gently peated. And that sounds like something that I would enjoy. Uh, not only that, this whiskey just being the superstar that it is, I figured it would be a very fitting review for my 100th episode. So why don't we hop into our review of this one, see what it's all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Of course, Springbank is famous for being a craft distillery, so our ABV on this one comes in at 46%. It's obviously going to be non-chill filtered and naturally colored. We've got a beautiful color to our whiskey. Uh, as for the label, Springbank is known for being kind of like a no frills brand, as in we're all about the whiskey, we don't care about the packaging, so we're just gonna make our labels using Microsoft Paint. Um, I think it's a look, I don't love it, I don't hate it, I think it's fine, so presentation score is gonna be three out of five. Aside from that, our label is pretty bare bones, but we do get all the information we need. We have a little blurb on the back here. Uh, mine's in Chinese, yours of course won't be, but it does mention that it's non-chill filtered and naturally colored. Underneath the back label, we have the bottling date. Mine is from October 14th of 2020, last year. So, good info, decent bottle. Let's try our nose. Okay, so like kind of a an Asian sweet and sour character here. Um, freshly sliced apples, honey, red berries, dry hay some florals like heather, um, there's some rubber in here, some earth, some gentle peat, and um, lime, like lime zest, lime juice. Uh, right off the bat, we know we're into something craft. There's nothing bland or generic happening here. Now the palette. Um, slightly oily mouthfeel here. We're greeted with uh, caramel, some chili pepper, some earthy peat. Um, we have like this farmy element here, so like I'm getting rich barley notes in here. Uh, hay, some like old wood, some earth, and maybe even a little bit of manure. Um, more of that sweet and sour element. So like, um, I don't know, what do we have? We have honey, we have lime juice butterscotch in here, and maybe a little bit of white vinegar too. And now our finish. Okay, uh, a lot of those farmy elements kind of carry over. Again with the hay, that big barley note, more lime juice, 
more heather. Um, I'm getting butterscotch again. Earth, peat, very much a continuation from the palette. Um, some savoriness in here, something meaty maybe like, like Chinese pork ribs. Uh, and we have some drying oak spice in here. This is medium in length. So this isn't your typical 10 year old whiskey, but of course you guys already knew that. Uh, absolutely nothing about this experience feels like generic or corporate or really anything less than uh, a punchy, farmy, rugged, scrappy whiskey. But despite all those wild descriptors, it's still a somewhat accessible whiskey. And I say somewhat because Springbank isn't an introductory whiskey. It never has been. Uh, I remember my first sip of Springbank 10 about 10 years ago, probably around the time this was distilled. I didn't know what to make of the stuff because I was pretty new to whiskey at the time and these were some seriously rugged and unpretty flavors. So it wasn't love at first sip. Uh, I just didn't have the experience behind me. But yeah, once you've run through the gamut of standard flavors and generic bottles, this is exactly the kind of bottle you'll turn to when you want to challenge yourself a little bit more. And like, it's not so challenging that some newcomers couldn't get into it. But again, it's not an introductory whiskey. You know, people always talk about that rugged Springbank character, and that's definitely a thing. Uh, it's been proven that for every bottle of Springbank you drink, your chest hair grows about 7% longer. Anyway, flavors. Uh, we've got some really great flavors in here. My favorite's probably that barley note, along with those like heathery floral notes in here. Uh, a lot of attention gets paid to like the peat and the rubber in this, and of course those are great, but for me it's those heathery florals that really help round out the whiskey. We also have some great sweet, sour, savory kind of Chinese style flavors in here. That farmy element I mentioned earlier with like the barley, the dried hay, the old wood, the manure, uh, and the florals I just mentioned. So there's a lot of elements that are coming together here. So my score for this one is going to be 89. I'm happy to join the chorus of voices on the internet singing this one's praises. It's a fantastic whiskey. Yes, it is one of the best 10 year olds that money can buy. So it is definitely one for you to check out if you haven't yet, even if you're just getting started. And if you are new to whiskey, you may not like this stuff, at least not right away. It's got the kind of flavor profile that a lot of people have to sort of grow into appreciating, but that's fine. Um, you know, not to wax poetics or anything here, but whiskey is all about sort of developing your palate and broadening your field of appreciation. And when you are ready to challenge yourself a little bit more, that's when you start turning to these rugged whiskeys, these unpretty whiskeys, these characterful whiskeys, peated whiskeys, cast strength whiskeys, intense whiskeys. Uh, in my opinion, that's where some of the most memorable and rewarding whiskey experiences can be found. Yeah. So value here is okay. Uh, I would have called it great value even just a couple years back. I still do think it's worth the money, but I'm not sure how much more I'd be willing to pay. I'm sure this bottle will keep climbing in price, as will many other spring banks. I don't know what this is going to cost in one or two years from now. Like I am genuinely concerned that eventually Springbank on the whole as a brand will just price itself out of my budget. Obviously I don't want to see that happen. I am a Springbank fan, but unfortunately that does seem to be the direction the wind is blowing these days. Um, for now, our bottle of 10 here is still pretty widely available and it's still affordable. So grab it while you can. All right, thank you very much for joining me on my 100th episode. Do me a favor and hit subscribe, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you guys. Have you tried our Springbank 10-year-old? Did you pay too much for it? What do you think about it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.